Today's the first day of September, and I went and picked up the Avion in the dark last night. And it's time for me to take a look around and see what kind of problems I'm going to have. Sitting here having my cup of coffee, certainly, like many Avions, it looks really good. But I know I've got a lot more problems to take care of before I can take it out on the road and be proud of it again. One of the things I'm going to have to deal with is this rock guard. You can see how gray it's gotten from oxidation. I've cleaned this before using one method. I'm thinking about a different way of doing it this time. You can see the mold and mildew that I'm going to have to take care of just to get the body looking pretty good. That paint stripe needs, or that tape stripe needs repaint, uh, replacing. I'll have to take care of that, maybe not this year. This tire's got some dry rot, so it's going to have to be replaced. Also some cosmetic things like the lug nuts on the wheels. Here's a good example of what things look like once the clear coat finish starts wearing off. We've made the decision that we're going to try to get it up to Chuck Kao this year and have it clear coated. The paint job on the hitch is in bad shape. We got an idea on how we might take care of that this year to, to solve the problem once and for all. The awnings are dirty, but we've dealt with that before with a pressure washer. That's how we'll fix it again. Who knows if any of the appliances work. Some of the tail lights don't work, so we're going to see what we can do with maybe some new LED lights. Reflectors will have to be removed, cleaned, and reinserted. And that's pretty much it. A lot of repairs, a lot of it's cleaning, and a lot of it's going to take some time to get it done. I'd show you the interior, but the uh, Avion gal lucked out, and that looks almost new. It just needs a little dusting and vacuuming, and it's ready. So it's just a matter of working back and forth, using the power pressure washer, and it'll just slowly push the dirt out of the umbrella fabric. No need for soap or brushing or anything else. The power washer will just push the dirt right out. Well, this is what the strategy is going to be. We've got this gray material that we put down for many years and it's hard as a rock. I don't think we're going to be able to get it off. So we've decided rather than do that, we're going to clean the roof down real good and get this stuff cleaned down the best we could and then we're going to put the tape right over that. Our theory being that it's strong enough that the tape will adhere to it. To um, take care of sealing the roof, I've got the Eternabond tape. Heard a lot of discussion in the forum about scraping stuff off. My trailer came with this gray stuff on it. I've put several coats on in the meantime. It's been a pain to take off so I decided to take one for the team and try to attach this stuff with just knocking off the loose stuff along the edges because uh, it's quite a job to try to get it all down to bare metal. So I decided I'll take one for the team for this year. We'll see how it holds up and maybe it'll make the job a little bit easier, at least for the people that have this type of material on their roof. This are somewhere along the line. You're going to goof up and you're going to end up with some pieces that get stuck on top of each other. You're never going to get those pieces apart. But what I'm doing is I'm taking corners that are still good, like this one here, I'm cutting them off and I'm using them to cover individual rivets up on the roof of the trailer. Also, you're going to need to make sure that if you're using a single edge razor, which I'm using, you're going to have to change the blade often. So that's it for now. I'm going to uh, quit for the day. I've got uh, leaves coming down, which is a real nemesis, and it's starting to sprinkle. The Turnabon uh, holds to wet material, but I don't want it going down on top of my Avion and possibly um, trapping something in. By the way, if you were looking at this air conditioner cover, it's not mounted on backwards, it's not mounted on at all. It's been painted and getting ready to move to the front of the trailer and re-bolted down on the air conditioner. Here's what the air conditioner looked like. Uh, with the cover off, we found that there were some cleaning chores to be done underneath the thing, and we expect that they'd be running more efficiently. Also, one of the things that we had to attend to is the uh, antenna. It was broken and it's designed to have a Bakelite uh, screw uh, and uh, socket that if you hit a tree or something it'll break to protect it. You can still get the parts for this in some places although they're rare and uh, it really is a very effective antenna when it's working properly. So today it was raining and I decided to take down the top of the air conditioner cover I should say the bottom and clean underneath it 
and then do a repair that I've been putting off for a long time. And what I did was I took and repaired this one broken vent here by taking a piece of channel and using JB Weld and just gluing it right in. I also then took weather stripping and put it along both edges so that when the vents open and close it doesn't leave that gap that continues to let air go through. So overall that looks pretty good. As I've been working on the roof taping it down I've come upon a, yet another problem. You'll notice on the intakes for the furnace there's a screen that's become worn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the kind of caps that you use on the exhaust of a furnace, these guys here, and I'm going to take a pair and install them on the top of the trailer. These things are readily available at any supply store. I happen to get these two at Camping World. So you can see they fit on the top very nicely. I'm just going to put them on, take a couple of stainless steel screws, tighten it down through the pipe, and that job will be done. Well, it's Saturday, October 12th. We started this project September 1st, working on and off. Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to be putting new molding around the windows. And I'm going to be doing it exactly the way I was told to do it on the Avion Forum. Have you joined the Avion Forum yet? If you haven't, now's a good time to do it. Go on to the site silveravion.com and right below the header is a sign that says join the Avion Forum. You'll find it on every page. If you're interested in learning more about Avions or how to take care of them, you want to get on the forum. There's 1,200 other people on there that are ready to help you with any of the questions you may have. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to remove all of the old trim around the window. And then when we get the new trim out, we're going to start in the center. We're going to go around and push as much trim as we can around the window. When we get to the end over here, we're going to bring it down. We're going to come out about a quarter of an inch on the two ends here. We're going to put some silicone underneath, butt the two ends together, and push them into place. We also need to silicone around each of the corners with black silicone to keep the material from popping out on us. Well, let's see how it goes. So I've got my little workshop set up now. These are the tools that I'm using. My little, I forgot my toothbrush at the hotel toothbrush, the tiny screwdriver, something to cut the uh, trim with, long nose plier to pull out the old cork, or our old caulk, and a high pressure hose just to blow all the dirt out. As I take out the molding, I'm removing the new molding from the box and kind of using that as a guide to know how much molding to cut off. I'm going about an inch, two inches beyond where I'm at, making sure that I cut the uh, the molding at a square angle. As I went along here, took off the first piece, I did have quite a bit of dirt along here that I had to clean off. Some corrosion that I had to pick out with the little screwdriver in order to get this all clean and dry. And then I've just begun going around, pushing the molding in little by little, jamming as much down as I possibly can. Here's a problem that I found this molding here always wanted to pop out and what I've discovered is is that one of the mounting screws that they put into this window isn't perfectly centered and because of that the head was over just enough that it didn't allow the molding to penetrate in all the way into its groove. Now all of this inside here is grooved in so that you could easily put a screwdriver bit in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a new hole, insert the screw where it's supposed to be and then just fill this hole up with silicone. So that's it. I got the first window done. The learning curve, just like anything else, takes a little bit of time. It took me about an hour to do it. The hardest part was doing the corners, of course. What I found was molding around the corners with this stuff, putting it in place, then going back and lifting it out and uh, siliconing it in was the best way to go. Um, not all the way around, but past each corner and then back, put the silicone in and then continue on. All in all, it looks pretty good. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Avion Forum. <laughs>